Tare pot! Pute suna bine! Healthy has been a very loaded term growing up and especially in a Punjabi household. My uncle played I think some hockey nationals or something. His idea was they will come and hold my wrist like that Oh, we can see your bones Have people not giving you enough to eat I would eat this entire uh, Like a bloody bunch of bananas All around It's just such a twisted idea My uh, Because it's a Punjabi home Love is often measured in Desi ghee And anything that is uh, that comes from love Is just healthy right so, uh, if I go to my aunt's place, there is desi ghee on desi ghee on the sarso ka saag and makki ki roti. <laughs> God, it is. You know, growing up in that kind of a hopeless life, growing up to be a millennial. At least my standards of health and how I looked at healthy really evolved. Where for them, it used to be, you know, eating the right kinds of food so that, I don't know, maybe people could go out in the farm and work. Our standards of health became very different. What is my stance of health? That's very straightforward, right? I want to be able to, you know, I want to look good. I don't want to, well, I don't want to not look good. I mean, if I go to a beach and like remove my t-shirt, I don't want people like turning away from me, right? So, so that was one. Then there was this thing of, you know, the ability to, to essentially get through an entire day. I'm in my mid thirties and I know this is really weird, but I have to say this that you don't want to be at a place, especially you know, running a startup, you don't want to come to the end of the day feeling like, I can't take this anymore. Here's the other side of kind of this, this kind of health, health related reality. There is, we have been taught that all of health involves like a fair bit of exercise and some bit of food. My personal discovery moment was it involves a lot of, you know, a lot of dealing with food and some bit of exercise. 20% of what you do, uh, what you do in terms of your journey towards being healthy comes from exercise, 80% of it comes from food. Everyone who's talked about food has talked about the importance of counting calories. People have gone to crazy extents, right? In trying to get to this image of healthy, I tried everything. I actually tried counting calories. There was, there, there, there are a whole bunch of applications on your phone. I would log every single meal. One tablespoon of this, one teaspoon of that. I would live with a weighing scale. I think so many people are used to this. Weigh every single thing down. Here's the challenge with all of these things. Anyone who's attempted to count calories has suffered from guilt through and through and through. When I started doing this, when I started, you know, racing triathlons, life used to be about counting calories all day long. All day I was thinking, before breakfast I was thinking, I can have this, I can't have this because calories. Morning, in the morning I would read something about this particular thing having this kind of glycemic index and there is only and only guilt. From breakfast till uh, till like about 11 am, I was only thinking of who all the calories I had at breakfast. From 11 am to 3 pm, I was only either dreading lunch calories or thinking about lunch calories. The only thing that's that's really worked, especially whenever we've spoken with people who've, who've you know, been successful at eating healthy, over a long period of time is varied food. You, you still continue to have different kinds of foods, but as they say, you know, enjoy in moderation. And the moderation cannot come from calorie counting. The moderation truly comes from some kind of a some kind of a proxy count. If if you are someone from the north, you would you can't really give up dal makhri, right? But you what you can do is you know and and again what we've seen successful people doing smaller bowl of dal, maybe not five rotis or three rotis. Actually, no one has five rotis. Right? But the thing that people manage to do really well is that instead of finding their guilt through some externally enforced metric. There is the whole deal of portion control working really well for these people. Our imagination at up is that you are not cooking at home because it's it's an easy thing to do. People cook at home because it's the right cool thing to do. I cook at home because I really worry what kind of oils are used in the rest of my food. You know, when the if I order pasta from outside, I am looking at the line of the jar. Ki, you know, here's like me grinding out a spaghetti, and here's the fat it leaves in its wake. Right, that's the thing that worries me. I want to cook at home for this reason. 
But then, for healthy eating at home, portion control becomes incredibly important. What is portion control? Typically, it's easiest for us to think in terms of, you know, let me have one bowl of rice, this is my rice bowl at home. Or let me have three rotis. Or today I will do two rotis instead of three. Because those things we understand. Calories we do. Number of rotis we do. So we set, it, set out to ask this question of what is the right amount of food to eat? We started measuring people's food. We started measuring weights that people typically go at during, you know, at the start of the day, during the day, end of the day. And we realized that somewhere between 800 to about 1200 grams for most average Indians seems to be the right place to, to consider that the overall quantity of food we had in a day. So what that means is that 800 to 1200 grams is a great starting point for most people when thinking about portions. Let's break this down. When you break this down across three meals, it comes to somewhere between 250 grams to 400 grams of overall food. Somewhere between 1000 and 1200 grams of food ensure, and when most of this food is homemade, ends up ensuring a neutral kind of weight, ends up ensuring, and because this home cooked food, that you typically have the right kinds of energy to do the right kinds of tasks. When you want to start reducing the amount of the weight that you have, typically there are two ways that work really well. You can either start reducing, but with a very light low margin, reducing the amount of food you eat by ever so slight an amount, typically 100 grams delta. Or you typically reorganize your plate. Let me actually then go to what this plate typically looks like. What is a 400 gram plate look like for, for an average height, average uh, build? Indian male. We typically have seen that somewhere between 250 to 300 grams is the amount of sabzi plus maybe meat or whatever protein you have or palya or dal on the side that you have and 100 to 150 grams is typically the amount of carbs on the side that you have. What that, what that translates to in on a typical like say an, uh, a typical North Indian plate is about Three rotis of 40 grams each, which is like a decent medium-sized roti, right? Almost, almost tending to the larger size. So three rotis, which are at about 120 grams, and the rest of it is one bowl of dal, which is about 150 grams, one bowl of uh, one bowl of say sabzi, which is about 120 grams, and any deltas that are in there, you can always add salads in the mix. In fact, you could take the uh, take the dal a little lower, add some salad there, or even better. Take the rotis a little lower. So what that does in a very nice way is instead of cutting down the number of rotis, it cuts down the size of the roti that I'm having. So I feel fairly full, but I'm also able to leave about 20 to 25 grams out to have salads with my food. When we think about cutting down even further, here's how we reorganize. We say that instead of having this additional roti, why don't you amp up on the salad that you're having, right? The fiber content will increase the amount of fullness that you feel and you end up having the same kind of food. So you still have the same energy during the day. You feel slightly fresh, you feel less sluggish, and your plate still stays at about in the 350 to 400 gram range. So how does my typical, uh, you know, my typical outlay look throughout the day? Well, on, on the nicer days, I like to have about two eggs, which are about 45, 45 grams each large eggs. So that's 90 grams. Uh, a slice of bread on the side, which is about 20 grams. A couple of bananas and that's my breakfast. Lunch and dinner are 400 grams each. I like to add protein and a little bit of color in my plate. And I like to leave some room for a snack. Right, so that's how my plate looks. That's great portion control. Great way to start. And, and it's a relief to be away from like calorie counting at every single meal because God, this does look. Right, thank you.